magic of CD. Okay, what I'm going to talk about for a few minutes now is the impact of internet technologies um, on the music industry. Hopefully another area that most students find really intrinsically just an interesting area. Okay, Many people are into music, they're into entertainment of all kinds um, and it gives again lots of useful examples of how technology has an impact on a particular industry and it also gives us kind of gateways and insights and useful reminders into how again we don't operate in a legal vacuum okay so the kind of how um, some industries have been changed fairly rapidly because of um, the impact of internet te and digital technologies and as good examples of the kind of legal battles that are going on in relation to the social impact of technology this is a good area to look at as well as, as I said being simply interesting hopefully most people find it an interesting area um, the big thing that comes around um, <coughs> excuse me the big thing that comes around this area is where we can look at the issue of illegal downloading is a good example um, that's often a focus on that but you know it's there's a lot more going on besides that um, so the focus tends to be on ooh, MP3s and illegal downloads um, and what's the industry doing about it uh, but also then think well are there any lessons here for um, Hollywood or for the television industry okay, um, and other industries that might suddenly be Napstered for whatever better expression uh, what do we mean by Napstered? well that's a reference to Napster which was the um, a, a, file, um, a file sharing service that got a really high profile at one time uh, because it was the kind of the first of the big peer-to-peer -peer file sharing networks um, and it allowed people to make copies of music and share them around on computers I'm simplifying it but essentially that's what it did and the issues that come up around this is again it's the very nature of technology and the intellectual property and what the very nature of stuff is because if I were to lend somebody my CD here, okay, or lend them a vinyl record um, then while they're playing it I can't play it but because this is digital actually I can put this into a computer and I can get the computer to um, make copies of the tracks on it and then you can play the tracks that are on this and I can play the tracks that are on this um, and the issue becomes about well is it theft or not I haven't actually stolen anything in some ways except I've stolen the, the potential income okay, I've stolen Pops the potential income um, insofar as you may decide that actually you like the perfect digital copy that I've given you um, but you don't want to pay for it so you've got a copy now so why go out and pay for one okay so this issue about the kind of you know this potential income and what's happened is if you look there's a lot of research being done by the music industry that goes ooh look with the rise especially of broadband access combined with the availability of cheap computers and the availability of, and ability of people to burn their own CDs now and DVDs or simply copy things around as MP3 piles, um, files onto players without even going through the kind of the burning process we can get we can cut this physical medium out altogether I can just have electronic files that I'm passing around all the place um, that combined with that as that's risen up and one of the issues is that you know, sales have been going down. There we go. Except, of course, it's more complicated than that. Because it turns out that other research that looks at it closely discovers that the people who are most likely to illegally download music are also the ones who very often are spending the most on legally purchasing music. And it's just that thing, I suppose, that people go through a certain point in their life and they're really, really into music. And they'll, they'll consume it legally and illegally. So the industry has to be careful because it could be that if they simply try and prosecute and take legal action against some of the top downloaders, they're also the same people who are, are buying that music at the same time. Okay, um, And again, there's, a, there's an issue here to be played around cultural issues. Um, and we'll look at instances of you know bands like Metallica and, and other bands where Metallica were initially very much against downloading. You know, Would you call a plumber out and expect him to fix your plumbing for free? Asked Lars Ulrich and Metallica. Um, don't download my tracks, my music, because I'm a craftsman and expect to have it for free, etc, etc. But at the same time, that's hardly very rock and roll rebelish, is it? And Oasis and other bands have had the same kind of thing, that when you're appealing to a certain market, especially if it's that kind of, you know, uh, people going through a rebellious phase in their life, you're going, oh yeah, teenage rock and roll rebellion, etc, whatever. Oh, but by the way, don't illegally download our tracks. Well, there's a bit of a mixed message there. 
whom did that live? But anyway, very interesting area to look at. So we look at the record company responses, they've done legal responses to it, they've done technological responses to it, um, you know, so all kinds of different things. One of the technologies they came out with meant that if you put a CD like this into a track, um, into, into a, a computer, and you tried to copy it, it wouldn't let you copy it. And they spent an awful lot of money on this technology, getting this just right. But oh, it turns out that some clever teenager worked out that we were a particular variation on this technology because they've had a few guns at it that if I use a black marker pen on the right bit of the CD it defeats millions and millions of dollars worth of research technology into anti-copying devices. Most recently people like Sony have run into problems because of the them um, putting additional sort of programming and software onto CDs which meant that if you bought certain things you suddenly discovered that hey there's something lurking on my computer it's something I didn't ask to be there and they've run into all kinds of problems about this. So this is this fantastic ongoing battle. Um, other issues that have come out is just generally, again, it's really interesting to look at this whole idea of um, kind of disintermediation and what's the role of the record companies. Um, whether you're consuming your music legally or illegally, kind of what is the role of the record companies? Um, is it to promote lots of new bands? Is it to promote your band? Well, if you get into a particular band or sort of musician and it turns out perhaps they can promote themselves quite well, thank you very much, without the the help of the record company and given that traditionally a lot of artists feel they've had a very poor deal in terms of royalties from record companies again there's sometimes been limited sympathy to what's going on so essentially it's a complicated picture it's an interesting picture it's an area that you know keeps changing all the time um, and one that you should find really interesting so it gives us insight into the kind of techno technological developments that are going on on both sides and it gives us insights into the legal developments that are going on on both sides and that could be applied and extrapolated from the subject of music um, and video as intellectual property to general issues around intellectual property in the internet age. So that's one of the reasons that we look at that, because it's interesting, it gives us an insight into rapidly changing technolo technological developments and it gives us an insight into some of the kind of legal issues around intellectual property that can be applied both within and outside of that particular industry. There you go.